Hey there YouTube, welcome to the second part of my uh, French Army uh, Grand Army update. And as I mentioned in my first video, or the part one, this is uh, basically my second platoon. So second platoon for second part works out pretty good. So I kind of nicknamed this particular platoon my uh, veteran platoon. And again, um, the way that I kind of design my armies is I don't stick to any sort of particular points value. I kind of design it around uh, a budget, a fixed budget, and what I can buy for that budget. And if I do need to buy the odd thing uh, to bolster something up or something that I kind of, uh, you know, decide to get and, and didn't when I first started, uh, you know, I, I, I can add that as is but I tend to sort of collect a whole army first and then and then paint it uh, later. Um, I've had these guys for probably the best part of a year maybe a little bit longer uh, and they've just been in reserve waiting to be painted. Um, a lot of it was to do with um, me being a little bit nervous about trying to nail the paint scheme uh, as I, I think I may have mentioned in my very first uh, army update video. Uh, so here we have the second platoon, and I kind of call it my veteran platoon because uh, the majority of it is kind of designed to be veteran. Um, the we'll start with uh, a major, a uh, lieutenant, a veteran lieutenant with a veteran uh, assistant. Now, if you notice, this guy may have been in my first video. It was because I got some figures mixed up and I actually uh, had my NCO from my infantry squad here uh, mixed in with my command group and associated helpers so uh, this machine some machine gun guy is designed to go with my um, first lieutenant here and of course this is the uh, NCO figure which I converted into an officer um, uh, by giving him a pistol holster and cutting off his uh, rifle holster and that is a Japanese holster uh, he came out pretty cool, and because of his position, you can't really tell that um, he is... Actually, I do need to add uh, a stripe on his arm uh, to denote him as Foreign Legion. He'll have like a green stripe. Uh, but that's the only way you could basically tell that he's Foreign Legion, because his collar lapels are hidden. So there we have the First Lieutenant, and his helper is, of course, the guy with the submachine gun. And I thought um, for a helper... Uh, because the sort of foreign legion uh, are kind of uh, you know not only veteran but also pretty good at hand-to-hand -hand stuff. Uh, if I am going to send units forward to go into sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat, then having this guy with a submachine gun is a pretty good, uh, pretty good choice. So he joins him, and that makes uh, my basic sort of command squad. Uh, then we have uh, a veteran MMG team, a veteran mortar team, a medium mortar. A veteran sniper team, a 11-man unit of Foreign Legion, which of course are veteran, a and the only two things that are kind of regular are the Traviors, um, because they basically have no choice. They're basically regular as standard, but they are uh, uh, a colonial, so they'd kind of go with the Foreign Legion, and b um, they actually have the sort of tough fighter rules, so uh, they're pretty nifty in hand-to-hand -hand combat compared to a regular infantry squad as well. So that's another uh, benefit of having them in uh, this particular platoon, which is kind of designed. Sorry, that let's hit the camera tripod. Uh, it's kind of designed to be a uh, an assault uh, an assault platoon. Um, it's got the um, media machine gun team for support. It's got the mortar team for some uh, better than average. Um, long distance support and of course it's got the char b1 which of course i'll go into uh, uh, these three units here in a little bit more detail because these are new units that i've done and haven't covered in a previous army update the the classic char b1 um, and uh, i do actually really love that model um, but i kind of kind of on the fence whether to make it veteran or not um but if we go, you know, it's got the choice of being veteran, it's got the choice of being a regular, whatever um, whatever the points allow sort of thing. Uh, it's generally the way it'll go. Um, 
and of course uh, the two infantry units as I've already mentioned. So let's start off by going into the command and uh, we'll start with the, uh, the actual um, platoon leader, which of course is uh, this second lieutenant here. So we have a veteran second lieutenant um, and he has one helper and that makes the basic command team and he's actually, um, these, both these guys will be foreign legion uh, infantry. We have a major for his command ability and he is also uh, in foreign legion uh, markings and he is alone but Obviously, I've got the choice of giving him a helper from my sort of pool of helpers. Uh, and this guy is, again, lacking in equipment, but he's also got the slightly earlier uh, tunic, uh, which is a little bit more green, and I believe it could be the 30, 30, uh, 34 or 36. Again, I can't really remember, and, and I won't waste time by looking it up. Um, so, yeah, nice figure. Um, and, but again, lacking in equipment and armed with a revolver where, like I've said in many of my videos, I would have really liked uh, at least one of the officers to have like a, a sort of a semi-auto uh, French pistol, a bit like the uh, the running loader. So that is the command element. Uh, next up we will go for the sniper team. Uh, these guys, uh, again I've shown you them in my second uh, army update, and these guys are destined to be veteran. And uh, Although they're actually marked up in infantry unit uh, colours, they're assigned uh, to this platoon from my regular infantry battalion, and they are uh, going to be veterans. Uh, you know, no sort of uh, obviously, um, you know, they may become regulars at some point, and, and obviously the platoons might change up. But this is kind of how I designed them. So at the moment, uh, in this platoon, they would be destined to be veterans. Um, and you can see that they're kind of designed to be uh, set up in a forest, actually inside the forest and shooting out. And you've got this spotter there, this binoculars, and of course the rifle uh, armed sniper. So that is the uh, sniper team. Uh, next up we'll go for one of the uh, newer uh, additions, which has uh, never been seen. And we'll start with the 81mm mortar. Uh, this model came out really cool. Uh, again, I went for that classic sort of uh, green stuff helic, um, and um, added like a some little bits of gear, like a little ammo box there. Um, and you can see um, that again, they're kind of designed to be setting up inside um, the sort of uh, very edges of a forest to sort of fire out of to give them some concealment. Uh, three man crew of course for for an 81 mil medium mortar and these guys came out pretty cool uh, like I say they're, they're done I maybe finished these guys last week and I was very happy with how they turned out um, they're kind of in full kit so I had to obviously go through all the the sort of uh, intricacies of having to paint all the leather facing and stuff as normal but at least they didn't have the uh, entrenching tools on their back uh, which kind of adds an extra element of annoyance. Um, but yeah, you can see it came out pretty cool. And I particularly like how, how the base came out. It's uh, uh, very cool looking and that sort of uh, forest terrain uh, flock that I've got there. Um, very cool. So that is the 81mm mortar. Uh, next up we'll go for the uh, MMG team. And again, this model is new, it hasn't been seen. And again, it's designed on a similar sort of uh, design to how the mortar team was set up, but on a slightly sort of uh, shallower uh, hillock. And we've got the three crew, the, uh, the uh, gunner, the uh, loader, and the, um, the commander. Of the team and you can see again they came out pretty cool I love the way the base came out on this on both of these sort of support uh, teams he's got the rank of a sergeant and he's got the mortar 
um, proficiency badge on his arm and uh, I forgot to show you them on the mortars but of course like all my units uh, these guys have their ranks and their names on the bottom of the base so there we have the um, this particular unit has got a sergeant in command corporal as the number one gunner and I sold out first class for the uh, assistant so pretty uh, pretty veteran uh, status on this, these guys uh, and befitting for their uh, for their veteran status and you can see that the way that I had to mount the uh, the machine gun I was actually having his feet rest upon the actual tripod itself and, and I wasn't sure whether that sort of uh, where his legs are filled in there was actually some kind of uh, um, moulding defect or whether it was uh, whether it was, he is actually supposed to have his feet up on the bipod like that uh, I kind of uh, couldn't really find out but at the end of the day I managed to get him on so that's the main part and he looks okay so that's the uh, MMG team very happy with how those guys turned out uh, if you just quickly jump back to the mortar team quickly show you uh, how their rank um, of the team came out so we have a corporal uh, and a sold out first and second class for the for the uh, the loader and the uh, assistant, and of course the uh, corporal is in command for spotting and using the sight. And a quick spin around of those guys again. So yeah, very happy with how both of those support teams came out. Next up, we'll uh, quickly run through. The infantry units before going on to the uh, Char B1. Um, so uh, let's start with the uh, the trailers, and we we'll just quickly uh, move across to them. Uh, obviously, uh, quite different uh, compared to the uh, normal French infantry. And like I mentioned in my video when I did these guys, uh, these were basically the first unit. Um, of uh, a sort of African skin tone that I've that I've ever really uh, ever really done, I believe. Um, I, I, I mean, I've, I'm pretty sure I have painted uh, that that particular skin tone in the past, but um, not since I kind of got back into painting. So, um, obviously, I kind of uh, you know did a bit of research on how to how, how different people painted their sort of African skin tones, and in the end, I was very happy with the sort of way that I I selected to to do them. Um, so let's find the uh, the sergeant for these guys uh, because I can't remember which figure I made the sergeant. Um, possibly this guy. Yes, here we go. So this guy's the sergeant, uh, and you can see by his uh, double yellow stripes. And of course, the, the single East trail yours uh, actually have uh, yellow piping uh, as part of their. Uh, uniform anyway, with a uh, anchor as their uh, unit insignia, and I've, as again as I mentioned, these guys have got the older style um, haversacks, uh, which date from uh, sort of the, the towards the end of World War One, and uh, and you can see of course the famous Trollior, uh fighting knife there, uh, and his helmet hanging on his side. Um, Again, like I, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but it would have been nice to have a few of them wearing helmets rather than all her wearing fezzes. Um, so that is the sergeant. Here we have the corporal, design uh, using a figure with, an, with his uh, blade out. And you can see again, um, and uh, uh, all these guys have got eyes, um, which I, again I mentioned in my video before, where um, normally I don't paint eyes on on my. Uh, um, other regular sort of style um, non-African skin tone figures um, because the ink or the washes kind of pick the eyes out really really well um, so but uh, as I, again as I mentioned before because these guys have got the sort of much much darker skin tone I found that um, you know obviously washes don't don't do the job and, and don't really make the eyes stand out so um, by adding, uh, actually painting in the eyes, uh, gives the, the the actual face a lot more uh, life, uh, rather than just having a completely sort of uh, 
um, dark face with no sort of visual, visible features. And they also used sort of like a slightly lighter mix, um, almost sort of flesh plus brown, uh, to kind of give them that sort of slightly uh, lighter brown um, uh, lips that uh, uh, some African skin tones tend to have, and in, in particular um, from from sort of looking at uh, sort of the, uh, some Senegalese. Uh, um, Guys on online, they, they, a lot of them seem to have uh, uh, sort of slightly lighter uh, lips. So it was another thing that was quite easy to do to just kind of give the face a little bit more life. Um, you can kind of see there, it kind of just gives what would normally just be a dark face, uh, along with the eyes and the lips, just gives it that little bit of uh, of, of life. So here we have a. Uh, sold out second class, and like I said before in my last up, uh, the actual army update, these guys have got uh, randomly generated names from a Singalese name generator. Um, very handy, uh, very handy these name generators, and you seem to be able to find them for, for practically every nation. So I'm sure uh, when I do my, some of my other armies, I'll be using uh, uh, the same sort of thing, uh, name generators for creating those characters. So here we have another second class sold out. And uh, the uh, this is actually part of the machine gun team. So we have the uh, the light machine gun team. So here we have a, a totally unique uh, figure to this particular uh, single easy unit. Um, he's kind of uh, advancing with his light machine gun. Um, try and there we go. And you can see that he's a sold out first class. And he's got his machine gun tab on his shoulder. And his helmet on his side, and the same style of uh, of backpack or have a sack. And for his assistant, this guy actually has a submachine gun uh, as opposed to a pistol. And again, similar sort of kit. I've shown you these guys before. I'll just quickly run through them. So here we have. A, he's a first class soldier, and he's got a classic name. And. Let's carry on. So we have three more infantry left. So we have another uh, first class soldat. A the VB launcher guy. Who again, uh, he's actually second class this time. So soldat second class. And finally, the classic standing rifle post guy. And he is a Soldat Second Class too. So that is the Singalese Trailers. And like I say, they're, they're basically designed to be uh, regulars, because you, I think that's all you can do with them. You can't make them uh, anything else. But uh, like I say, because of their tough fighter skills and uh, the way that this is kind of designed to uh, move up the battlefield and get into close combat if needed, they kind of fit in with that sort of... Uh, portrait quite well. Next up we will go for the Foreign Legion unit and again I'll do the same sort of thing, I'll just quickly run through them. We'll start off with the NCO which for some reason got mixed in with my spare assistance group a little earlier when I was sorting out the platoons. So here we have a basic guy uh, at the rank of sergeant and again because his uh, collar uh, collars uh, covered up by his arm there, you can't really see that he's Foreign Legion um, because sergeants have uh, yellow, stripe, yellow stripes on their arms. So here, there we have the, uh, the sergeant. Next up we have the uh, corporal. And we can see that this guy has got the Foreign Legion green stripes uh, and he's got this, of course, his corporal insignia. Um, pretty cool. Uh, I, I do like. Uh, I was glad that I uh, decided to uh, add Foreign Legion to the unit because, um, to me, uh, French Foreign Legion is one of those units that stands out. Um, and uh, you know, I wanted to I wanted to add them to my unit, and uh, I kind of it was a little dubious because 
I didn't really want to use sort of desert kit for Iron Legion, which are sort of like the general ones that you can get. So I thought, well, you know, you, they basically wore the same sort of gear over in the sort of European theatre. So I'll just paint up a regular unit of uh, infantry and make the Prime Legion by using their, you know, their insignia to, to identify them rather than uh, using sort of unique figures. And here we have a sold out first class, and this guy is the, the English guy. So Anthony Jenkins, he's uh, obviously a British guy. He's he's joined the Foreign Legion, and. Next up, the machine gun team. This machine gun team is unique to my French army. I've only got one team in this particular position. So we have a kneeling machine gunner, and uh, he's also got a uh, he's got a non-moustached uh, face, and you can see he's a sold out first class because of that stripe, and uh, of course his facings uh, in foreign legion colours too. The uh, next up, the uh, loader. And again, a, a unique positioned guy. Uh, I haven't got a guy repeated in any of my other units. And uh, he's basically like handing down a magazine. And he is a sold out second class, I believe. Yes. Uh, with just the stripe. The single cuff stripe. Rather than an actual chevron. So that is the loader. And here we have a regular infantry guy um, operating his bolt. And again, you can see the Foreign Legion colours on his cuffs. He's first class, sold up first class. Nice, nice pose. I like quite that figure. And here we have a sort of advancing rifle guy. He's with a, with a moustache. Pretty cool. Again, you can quite clearly see his uh, colouring, his uh, insignia. And of course, this guy is a sold up first class too. And this guy is obviously uh, Spanish. I, uh, I kind of uh, almost forgot that uh, these guys, being from the Foreign Legion, uh, would have a lot of uh, foreigners in their their ranks. Um, and uh, because the French weren't really supposed to be able to join the Legion at this sort of time. Um, and uh, so you got, um, uh, you know, obviously the officers were, were French. But the uh, the sort of rank and file um, really weren't supposed to be uh, uh, French, so um, that didn't, of course, stop the old French guy from getting in. Uh, so I have got a few uh, French named guys in in this unit, um, and obviously maybe a few more than I should have because I kind of forgot that uh, obviously the foreign leaders would have foreign foreign names. So here we have a kind of advancing infantryman, quite a nice position, a little bit basic. But this guy is a sold out first class, and he kind of has a, a semi sort of French name. Um, the classic standing rifle figure, this guy I've got in all of my infantry units. And even the Singalese guys have got somebody who's in a pretty similar position. Um, this guy is a sold out second class, so he's just got the, the single uh, stripe going around his cuff. And of course you can't really see his lapel, so you can't see his uh, lapel insignia. Uh, the VB launcher guy. Again, he's got his uh, Grenadier's uh, shoulder tab. He's a sold out first class. And he has that uh, slightly different rifle to the uh, normal infantryman. And of course he's loading his uh, VB grenade launcher. And finally, we have the kneeling guy. Again, you can't really see his uh, uh, colour insignia, but you can see his arm insignia, and he's a, a second class. Tristan Sadol. Okay, that is the uh, Foreign Legion squad. Whoops. So, uh, we're getting towards the end of the video now. But just one final thing to do, and that is my Charby 1. I kind of... Uh, kind of looking forward to doing this because I really uh, was pleased with how this came out. I was kind of really worried to uh, start this model um, and uh, in the end uh, I was very happy with how it turned out. I kind of used the colour scheme or based my colour scheme. It's, I did slightly change it uh, from a, a picture in uh, the Osprey New Vanguard um, 
tank series books, French tanks uh, number one. Um, I believe the second book uh, actually covers uh, sort of APCs, where the first one covers uh, the majority of the French tanks and uh, a few of the sort of armoured armoured vehicles. Um, but let's uh, let's get going and check check out this Char B1. So here we have the beast of a tank, the Char B1, and uh, it's kind of semi muddy. It's not totally muddy. Um, I kind of uh, you know I kind of uh, looked at the tracks and thought, well, where would these tracks uh, sort of sputter mud if they were if it wasn't like mega muddy, but just kind of uh, you know soggy and uh, a little bit waterlogged. Uh, so I kind of tried to muddy it up to the point where it's not actually been sort of dunking itself in mud, uh, but rather just going through sort of uh, muddy ground and, and uh, wet muddy ground. Um, and it's just kind of, uh, you know, splattered mud up onto the, uh, the sides and onto the front, but not quite muddy enough to actually get to the point where it's splattering onto the sort of turret and the sort of, the top, the, the sort of inner top parts of the tank. Uh, you can see that this really is a beast in comparison to other armoured vehicles, and in particular the, the Hotchkiss. Um, and uh, armament-wise, we have the um, the 75mm howitzer on the, on the front gun. That's actually supposed to be its main gun. Uh, and this uh, particular tank had a, um, a four-man crew, I believe. Um, there would be uh, the commander... Uh, in the classic sort of uh, mistake of French tanks of it being a single uh, turreted uh, and, uh, tank and the commander would have to not only command um, his tank uh, but possibly other tanks in his platoon and also uh, spot targets and operate the uh, coaxial machine gun and operate the uh, light anti-tank gun in the turret. And you can see that the uh, only way in and out for him was this uh, sort of rear plate entrance at the back. So you can't really even look out your turret that safely without making yourself a real sort of target. Um, and the uh, commander have actually made him a lieutenant. Uh, and uh, as opposed to other tank commanders who might wear more garish scarves, this guy's decided to uh, use caution and uh, maybe sort of camouflage himself up a little bit so that maybe if he's sticking his head out the turret um, he won't get spotted so easily and targeted before he can get back inside the safety of his turret. Uh, you can see that uh, colour scheme wise I kind of uh, used the internet to, to find this particular scheme. Um, it's not an exact copy but uh, this sort of scheme of where it's got uh, the French flags um, on the turret and uh, another French flag on the front there um, and then it's got its platoon marking uh, on the sides rather than on the turret and it's actually got the name on the turret rather than uh, uh, the actual platoon designation uh, and uh, carrying on with the crew anyway we have um, so obviously the commander in the turret we have a, a loader for the 75 mil gun at the front here um, and he will sit kind of uh, in the middle and then the driver who uh, Again, uh, in typical French style, is kind of overworked because not only does he have to uh, control the tank, but he also has in control of uh, the actual elevation uh, and the firing of the main gun. So it's kind of uh, you know a very overworked crew um, for the commander and the driver and, and the other two members, um, the loader, whose uh, sole job was literally just to load the, the main gun. He can't actually assist the commander anyway. And then there's right at the back here, um, I believe this could be his hatch here, um, is the radio operator who sat right at the back and basically can't do nothing else but uh, operate the radio. So kind of a uh, very uh, odd way of, uh, of allocating uh, jobs to a crew. Um, the actual tank itself is, is quite an armoured beast for sort of early war. And uh, I do really like this tank. Uh, I think it's uh, you know really cool tank on the battlefield as well as being uh, a really cool model uh, by Warlord. So that is the uh, Char B1. You can see it's got its uh, sort of uh, unique sort of uh, French camouflage scheme going on again. And 
Uh, I was very happy with how this turned out. It took a f probably a good maybe three or four days to do um, in, in total from start to finish. Um, and I made the aerial uh, by using uh, my melted sprue method. Uh, which is basically uh, you get your sprue, your piece of sprue with a sort of a slightly um, the sort of more thicker parts of the sprue, and you basically get a lighter or heat source, and you kind of just hold that over the the, the heat source until it kind of begins to melt or or sometimes even catch fire, and you basically just blow it out and then pull pull that cord out, and you can control the thickness, um, and and uh, in this particular case, I decided to make it a little bit thicker. And you can see that I've got a really cool uh, looking aerial there. Um, of course, it's still uh, semi fragile and you can still sort of snap it off, but um, it's a little bit more hardier than, than the aerials I, I normally make, which are a lot thinner. And uh, it certainly makes the tank stand out. Um, and I'm very happy with how this turned out. It's uh, certainly, I'd say, the best out of my three tanks in my French army. And. Uh, like I say, it's, a, it's actually quite a cool vehicle too. And uh, that basically brings this particular Grand Army update to an end. And my French army to an end. Uh, and another army finished. That's now, um, let's see, uh, to tell the truth, I still haven't actually officially finished my British army. I've kind of uh, I've still got a truck and an infantry unit to do for that. Um, but they're more or less finished. So that now gives me um, US Marines, Japanese... Italians, uh, Americans and Germans, or late war Germans, which again I've never really uh, shown you because they're kind of like my ad hoc armies, um, and uh, French now uh, to be added to the, uh, to the to the armies as they're building up and uh, um, sort of armies that I've got left to do uh, for the future. I have um, Chinese, uh, Chinese force ready to be painted. Um, and I also have uh, uh, Finnish, and I also have uh, Soviets, and I've actually got a whole bunch of stuff to add to my uh, my Japanese uh, as well, which uh, I don't know exactly when I'm going to be starting those, but I've basically got a whole bunch of infantry, um, regular infantry, and uh, a small... Uh, possibly even a sort of a small platoon's worth of uh, special naval landing force, which I'll add uh, to bolster up my Japanese forces infantry. Um, and I also have a uh, APC for them, uh, and also a, another tank and a artillery piece. Uh, so a whole bunch of stuff for my Japanese and. Um, Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, hit about the 15 minute mark. That's not too bad. Um, oh no, it's not. It's actually 33 minutes. So this has actually turned out to be a lot longer than I thought. But um, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you on my next uh, video, which I'm not exactly sure that'll be. But uh, stay subscribed and you'll find out when it's released. So until next time, uh, feel free to comment. Feel free to like if you liked. And I'll catch you next time.